All right, you got everyone in that's in, I suppose, or that's I, here? I do, everyone has been let in. All right, uh, you just got a, a, a text from Holly. She's hooking up the uh, phone, I believe. Oh yeah, she's. I see her there. She's there, so hopefully she's uh, able to, uh, but she's there. I just didn't know if she was able gonna be able to communicate regarding the uh, roll call. So we'll find that out shortly. Uh, so let's call the Sardic City Council workshop meeting to order for February 4th, 2021. Will the clerk please, or the clerk, please call the roll. Dean? Here. Leo? Here. Lewis? Here. Peterson? Here. Stanton? Here. And Beckham? Here. And Truster is not here, so I will. Yeah, yeah. Ken Truster uh, is absent with uh, prior notice he, he called earlier today. So uh, moving uh, ahead uh, to item three, agenda changes. Um, I have one uh, item, discussion item 5C will be city manager comments and updates. So city manager comments and updates added to the agenda as item 5C. Uh, any other items that the council or staff wishes to add? Okay, if none, we'll move forward to uh, public comments. So uh, this portion of the meeting, uh, invite the public to address the council regarding agenda items. Please limit your uh, comments to three minutes and identify yourself by name and community of residence. So does anyone, anyone wish to address the council at this time? I see Kristen Armstrong. Hi, Hi there, Dad. Kristen. It's Kristen Armstrong. Ryan, nice to meet you. Hopefully you and I will get to meet in person soon. Welcome aboard. Um, I'm Kristen Armstrong. Actually, my community of residence is St. Joseph, Michigan, although I spend more time in Saugatuck than in St. Joseph. So um, my comment is just um, quickly about the item uh, about Coughlin Park private events policy. Um, and I just wanted to weigh in on behalf of the SCA. Let me say, first of all, that honestly, Coughlin Park weddings really have no impact positive or negative on the SCA in terms of our revenues or dollars. So we have no skin in the game, the SCA, in terms of whether there are or aren't um, weddings held in Coughlin Park. However, I guess as um, someone who cares deeply about the community and as someone who has seen weddings happen um, via the SCA, what I do know is that um, there's really, I think, a larger issue here of welcoming people to the community and how we interact with people who choose to uh, come to the community. I would let you know that um, from our perspective and what we've been able to figure out, weddings, like every wedding, um, they bring thousands and often tens of thousands of dollars into the community in lodging, in food, in recreation, um, in all that additional money that gets spent by the bridal party, by their guests. So there's a huge economic impact for each and every wedding. And weddings, frankly, build deep affinity for the community. Then Saugatuck and Douglas are deeply interwoven into people's lives and stories, and that often results in additional trips, but then also in things like um, all the positive stories that they share with other friends and people who then want to come to Saugatuck. So there's that philosophical, but I think very part of this uh, important part of this conversation too. Um, Teresa Zerfus, who is our rental coordinator, said that over the last five years, she's seen a substantial interest in Saugatuck as a destination for weddings. So people are planning their weddings here without any um, family uh, connection here or even necessarily past connection because they're very attracted to having um, weddings on the water. And the river is often close enough. They don't need to be on the lake. The river is good enough for them. And so they find Coughlin Park to be a very attractive space for that. So I guess I would just say by having a welcoming, flexible policy, I think that in terms of the, the good of the whole for Saugatuck, um, you are inviting economic impact into the community. You're building deep affinity for and lives woven into the community. And um, we're just putting forth a face to people to say, we love to have you here. Welcome. We want to make it easy and um, really a great experience for you to be here. 
And I'll just say one more time, um, the SDA does not make money or lose money if there are or aren't weddings at Coughlin Park. So this is not about the SCA. It's just about my comments um, for how I see weddings benefiting the community. Okay, thank you, Kristen. Uh, anyone else in our audience wish to address council? Hi, my name is uh, Alec Payleitner of uh, Grow Cafe and Bistro in Sagatuck. My city of residence is Fenville, but I am a business owner in Sagatuck. I am uh, addressing council today on a discussion item 5A. Um, the, as a board member of Sadaba, I am speaking on behalf of them. Uh, we're just coming before the council to ask that you recognize Sadaba as a nonprofit organization in the interest of getting our charitable gaming license. Um, as uh, really it's twofold um, as a, a money driver for Sadaba so that we can continue to do good for the businesses um, and to uh, enhance the events um, that we do have uh, throughout the year. Uh, specifically, um, the reason this came to mind is because we have interest in doing something along the lines of a 50-50 raffle at our much beloved Music in the Park. Um, again, to make sure that we are financially a strong organization. Um, and as the motion here suggests, this, we, this is to uh, declare us a nonprofit um, in the interest of this application. So any, any funds derived through um, events that we put on with this gaming license, all the money, of course, would go right back into supporting the businesses in the community. Uh, and that's all I have. Thank you very much for listening today. <clears throat> All right, Alec, thanks for uh, your comments. Uh, hopefully you can stay uh, around while we discuss that item in case more questions uh, come up for you. Absolutely, Mark, I'll be here all meeting. All right, thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, any other one, anybody else in the uh, uh, wish to address council? Uh, yeah, hi, uh, my name is David Langley, uh, from Senator Deputy Ben Breakfast. And I, I would like to also um, comment about the, uh, our, I'm president at the SDABA, uh, about the uh, application today that Alex is going to present uh, about the gaming license. It will help us to raise funds for, uh, for us, and then we would pump that back into, into events um, to increase the uh, attractiveness of different events and also have more money available so that we can provide more, more events and, and, uh, <clears throat> and make it just more fun for people to stick around. And um, uh, and I think that's a useful, very useful thing for us and for the city as a whole, for the business community. Um, and the other thing is, I, I, as far as Kristen's comments too about, about, the, uh, about the weddings in the park, I think it's a really nice location. It's a really nice attractive location for, for weddings. We, we see groups pass by our bed and breakfast all the time. Um, traveling down the hill from the church and going to the park to have the ceremony or or uh, or vice versa and, and it's it's really a fun thing I think I think it's a really nice location and I, I think having that would be a uh, <clears throat> that would be a, it's a it's a really good thing to have um, have like what, what Kristen said a a place on the water to get married and it's just a beautiful thing to have so uh, that's all I wanted to say about those two items thank you all right thank you David okay uh, anyone else? Okay, uh, Aaron, you see anybody else out there? Apparently not. So we'll move on to uh, uh, discussion items this afternoon. Item 5A, uh, the Sadaba gaming license. Uh, Ryan, welcome to your first workshop and your first item to address council on. So it's all yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's, um, it's Thursday. And I'm still here, so that's a great sign. Um, no, it's been a it's been a real joy getting to uh, know everyone and uh, getting to learn about all the things that are going on in Saugatuck. And you are not short on projects or work, um, which is a good good thing. So the first item, um, which Karen actually wrote up, but I'll be happy to address it. Looks uh, pretty straightforward. Saugatuck Douglas Area Business Association desires to be licensed by the state of Michigan to conduct charitable gaming as authorized under the Public Act 382 of 1972, 
commonly referred to as the bingo act, the best of all the acts. Um, this law allows qualified non-for-profit organizations to be licensed to conduct bingos, raffles, and to sell charity game tickets. To qualify for a license, local government must recognize by resolution that the organization is a local non-for-profit. Uh, the resolution will be an action item on your regular meeting uh, coming up on Monday, February the 8th. Um, Alec, we heard from him earlier, um, still on the, on the Zoom call uh, to address any other questions. And um, yeah, it'll be on your, your Monday agenda. Okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. I, I wanted to yeah. add that Alec did send his 501c3 uh, form into the city and that will be included in your Monday packet. All right, thank you. I was gonna ask that specific question. So thanks for bringing that up. Uh, so I don't have any questions. So uh, after that, uh, Mr. Karen shared that. that Council, any, any comments, questions for Alec or our city managers? Yes, Mayor, sorry. Yes. I think Chris went, go for it, Chris. It looks good to me. I'm total support. Okay, um, Garnett. Mark, Mark, I have a, a quick historical question. Have we ever uh, had uh, raffle tickets or any type of charitable gaming, so to speak, occur in the city at Vents in the past? Yes. Okay. I, I, I mean, I remember, I, I can recall having such approvals come before council in the past. Uh, American Legion comes to mind as several several situations, possibly Cow Hill. Um, so, I would say yes to that. I that I that I recall. Okay, so this is not an uncommon request. No, no. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, City Council has done one of this recently in October. You did one for the the spear fishing group as well. Right, I guess, yeah, I remember that, right. The, the fishing event that was held this last fall. Sure. Okay. See Cindy. Anyone else? I see Cindy. I was Cindy? just gonna say the same thing that you did it in, I think it was October, maybe August, but um, for the youth fishing day. So it was so unremarkable that I didn't even remember that you did it, so. <laughs> Okay, if there's no further question, oh, I'm sorry, Lauren. <laughs> the event wasn't unremarkable, but just the discussion <laughs> on it, right, Cindy? <laughs> yes, the, the event was very nice, but the paperwork part was just slick. <laughs> yep, nothing else to add. Okay, well, if that's all there is, we'll uh, take this up uh, for approval or, or on uh, Monday and being optimistic. Alex, so I'm sure there'll be uh, no problem with this. Uh, thanks again for you and David sharing that information with us. Uh, moving on, next agenda topic, weddings in Coughlin Park. Uh, Ryan. Happy to address it, Mr. Mayor. So staff received a request for, for a wedding uh, in Coughlin Park. And uh, when staff reviewed this, we found that there's really no policy that would allow for administrative approval of rental in, in the, the park. Now there is um, an application or, or a policy that would allow for the gazebo area uh, to be rented out and we attach the policy and the exhibit that comes, comes along with that. So that would really force this request to be uh, treated as a uh, special event which would require it to be reviewed by council. Um, in, the, in the cover page, um, it's mentioned that staff cannot recall an instance when private parties have been given permission to use the areas of the park outside of the gazebo area. Uh, that's certainly not to say that those events did not occur, uh, just means that they probably occurred without uh, a permit. Um, and so we've had inquiries to use areas outside of, the, uh, outside of the gazebo area as it stands. As I mentioned, it would need to go to council uh, however, if council would like for staff to review the policy, uh, we'd be happy to look at other park areas and, and come back with some 
some options for council and, and work on a new policy. So that's the background, Mr. Mayor. Okay. I have a few questions. Thank you. Sure. Good morning. You ready for it? You bet. Um, let's see. Um, does anybody have a problem with us allowing um, weddings to take place other than right at the gazebo? Like if somebody wanted to um, perform a wedding at the top of the hill by the statue that's at the top of the hill, or perhaps if somebody wanted to have a wedding not under the gazebo, but maybe with a wedding arbor, you know, in the middle of the park, would anybody have issue with that? And if so, is that like a policy change? Because I know it only, it looks like we're only allowed to have weddings with chairs set up outside the gazebo at this point, as far as what the policy says. Okay. So, I mean, I have other questions, but I didn't know if we wanted to discuss whether, how we feel about that. Right. I think, I think part of the reason why was, this was requested to put on the agenda was not only the outstanding request to use the, the park, but also at our last council meeting, there were just some open questions that uh, the answers were not, you know, it, it, they went unresolved. And so I think this is a good time to, to uh, just, just open up and review this, this, this whole uh, uh, topic. Uh, for a historical perspective, uh, and I shared this with a few uh, of you, is that the best of my knowledge this came about because there was discovered that there was a wedding planner who was advertising Coughlin Park as a destination in part of her services. And uh, hence, we put in this specific uh, policy, and I believe she actually then arranged a wedding under the terms of this policy. It was, I, I'm almost thinking it came to, it was negotiated with her, uh, with, with Kirk and staff, but probably four or five, six years ago. So anyways, that being said, uh, Garnett, I know you've got some comments you'd like to share. Uh, well, basically, uh, I know Lauren's got a bunch more questions. I, I am certainly, uh, and I know you, Mark, and I had this discussion uh, last week. You know, that's quite, that's the ambiance of our city is when folks are, happen to be driving through town or, you know, anywhere and all of a sudden there's a wedding. It's actually quite um, quaint and it is something that really is quite attractive to our location. Um, so I think, I think it's easy enough for us to allow administrative approval for these types of events. I imagine my question was, I mean, for Venetian or for Glow in the Park or any other number of events, those are generally special event permits. Is that correct? Or are those just administratively approved? I see Cindy nodding her head. So I would assume those are special events, but if I don't, you know, my question would be how many, how many weddings do we have <clears throat> in Coughlin Park on average? That's my first question. Anybody know? I can speak to that. Right now, I have three scheduled. Okay, for the summer. Right now, yes. Okay. Cindy's raising her hand. Sorry. Yes. Maybe five, maybe five maximum per year. Okay. Fifty-five maximum. So it's not. It's not like they're going to overtake the park. That we know of. That scheduled. That we that we know of that they're scheduled there, but um, there could be ones that are not scheduled, but the ones that get a permit, maybe five a year. Okay. Sorry, I heard Chris. Okay. So, Chris? I'm sorry, I, I just had a question. Is that five a year at Coughlin or through all the parks? Uh, as mayor, I married people at, at the gazebo at Wicks in the Rose Garden and they weren't big events. I mean, they were mostly just the small party, but um, the, I have seen the ones at Coughlin that, that can be big. And I think it's a wonderful thing to do. I just, my only it, question would be, do we need to have some type of limit? Because a lot of people might want to use part of the park there for Frisbee or whatever, and how long the wedding actually can take that over. Cindy? Um, I think the only park that they're prohibited from having weddings is Oval Beach because that causes a lot of a lot of traffic, parking, and problems for the people operating the Oval Beach. Otherwise, I don't think there's any policy that says you cannot use 
the Rose Garden or other parks. Thanks. And just for clarification, Cindy, um, in the absence of a policy that would, well, they can have an event at any park, right? But they're not going to get a permit for the, the city to, to do so. Okay. Correct. So it's just a, a pop up event. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I may. So yes. I, I would think then that we would actually want to encourage folks to uh, either seek administrative approval or um, have a special event permit so that Scott with DPW. Uh, or the city has the ability to manage cleanup, um, that kind of thing. I would think that we'd also want to try to maintain the size. I know right now with the gazebo permit, it's 200. Um, I would think we would want to um, at least have some type of, uh, I don't want to say limitations, because you know, but at least size capacity, maybe capacity, just given that we don't want to take away the park from all the other folks who might want to use it. So I guess my, my question would be, uh, are there other municipalities such as ours that this occurs at and what type of policies do they have in place for weddings at their parks? Maybe we should look into it. Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I do have a concern over the number of attendees. Um, and I think it should be a maximum. I think 200 to me is fine. I would have a problem of more than one event in any one day. So there wouldn't be multiple events. I mean, theoretically, who knows how, where this can go, especially in this day of COVID, if, if there's not going to be, um, you know, uh, inside weddings allowed and, and uh, that type of thing, uh, only because it is a public park and you don't want to turn it into you know, a type of venue that is, you know, just one purpose. Uh, and maybe, you know, you'd hate to, see, I, I don't know if it'd be good to see one every weekend. I, I don't know, but that's a, dis, you know, that's what, that's a discussion we can have. Uh, maybe we do, at least in the summer months, limit them because keep in mind, we have big weekends where there's always more people using those. Labor Day weekend, 4th of July and Labor Day, you may not want to allow them on those on those weekends. Uh, and then Venetian Festival also uses it and ties that park up for most of uh, the Venetian weekend. Uh, historically, they have. Um, and there's some comments that Ken Trester wanted me to share, uh, but it, it would be later more in the area of the restrictions. Uh, so anyway, those are some of my concerns that I'd, I'd like to see what council, how council feels about them. Scott? Uh, Lauren, did you want to carry on with your questions? Uh, I only have one. I can finish up after you. Okay. Um, I guess I'd like a, just a, a view from, from Scott on things we may not be considering uh, in terms of uh, you know, what it means for DPW, uh, what our past experience has been in terms of the load it puts on staff uh, to um, prepare and deal with the aftermath of them. Sure, I yeah, I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, you know, from an operation standpoint, we've we've handled some pretty large events downtown, especially compared to what I would assume would be a somewhat small, quick wedding. Um, from from our perspective, we just like to have communication both ways from who would be the event coordinator um, to the DPW or city city administrative staff, because we'd like to do a couple things uh, for both parties. Uh, one being little details like turn off the irrigation a couple days ahead of time, let the ground harden up a little bit. So it's not so squishy for people. Make sure uh, we're not, you know, giving a, a bride a shower on her day that she's not planning on it. Um, we'd like to mark the utilities, the irrigation and known electrical lines. If someone's driving a, a stake in the ground for any sort of structure. Uh, obviously we'll, we'll coordinate mowing around around that event. And then just some of the basic stuff that one thing that usually gets overlooked is if, in my point of view, if someone's hosting a wedding there, then they should probably have some sort of um, trash accommodation unless you know the policy is that the city would, would uh, take that responsibility on. 
Um, and the, depending on the size of it, maybe they want a porta potty or something at one of these things. Um, and then, of course, just like our special event applications, we'd want to know the start of the setup date and the takedown time. And um, if at all possible, discourage driving equip heavy equipment on the lawn and, um, and just a, a basic contact information that any damage that, that may occur, we could follow up with whoever would be responsible for that. And that's really about it. Great, thank, thank you for that, Scott. And um, I, I agree with uh, the comments in favor of this that my other colleagues on council have made so far. And, and I think Kristen, during public comment, made a very compelling argument of the real benefit that, that making this a what destination for weddings has not only to the folks that have rental properties here, but also the, um, the hospitality businesses we have through town. So I'm very much in favor as long as we can do it uh, in a way that doesn't lead to unintended consequences. Okay, Lauren, you wanna finish your thoughts, please? First of all, Scott, thank you for thinking of the bride and not wanting a wet dress as she's walking down the aisle uh, to the gazebo. That's I like that you're thinking of these things. Um, two, um, you know, Scott brought up some things that I wasn't thinking of. We don't allow the actual reception to take place there. Am I correct? It's just the the ceremony, or are we, or do we allow an actual reception to take place? I know the hours are limited for how long, but are we talking receptions or just the ceremony? I would think ceremony only. Yeah, we we don't allow. The reception right that's a right couldn't do that anyway okay um as far as the cost we're charging the 500 dollars. is that for the use of the gazebo or at any spot in the park if we decide other parts of the park would be worth having a wedding if somebody was asking i know you know aaron brought up that somebody was asking to have it not at the actual gazebo and are we charging $500 if say they want to have it at the top of the hill and they have 200 guests and would we, you know, obviously charge the $500 to be able to do that? I assume we're not charging the $500 for a pop-up wedding where there's like four people involved, where there's no chairs set up. Um, like Chris, if she was doing a wedding there and it was a pop-up and there was only four people involved because a lot of people are doing that now, we're not charging the 500 for that, are we? These are all questions I have. <laughs> and then one more question. Um, if somebody wants to use the gazebo for say an exercise class, we're not charging the $500 for that question. I would say most of your, from my perspective, it's no to most of the things you 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 ask and that if and that's part of the reason why reviewing this policy is we want to ex call it just not coffin park gazebo rental but coffin park wedding rental policy or policy for rental or weddings and be more specific why i you know and that kind of leads to some of your you know, the questions especially if you review that you get down to the restrictions and how do you differentiate between a, a wedding party, private of private functions versus, you know, the uh, community events? Uh, and then community events, obviously, they do rope off, they do charge to get in, they do serve alcohol. Uh, so that's kind of a, you know, I think if we're really looking at just wedding or social, uh, private social events, that that's maybe how we should term the term the policy. To be a little bit more, uh, more you know, pertinent just to, to to weddings as opposed to, you know, the, the many community events we have down there. So, so Mark, Mayor, yes. is this something that we can uh, then task Ryan with as far as uh, drafting up uh, perhaps a policy for weddings at Cochran Park as a whole? Um, yeah, and I don't know if we want to just call wedding slash private social events in case, you know, there's a someone that has a, I don't know, special, I, I don't know, I can't, you can't, those you don't want to, or, you know, you don't really want to either tamper them down or, or 
be too have any two regulations. I, I think we're looking at bigger events, in, in my mind at least. Um, yeah, and, and are we going to be looking at still a, a special event approval or just administrative approval? I have a tendency on this one we ought to have it administrative approval, but you know make sure that we give our staff the proper guidelines and, and policy thing that you know the policy that they can they can follow. So. Ryan, why don't you, you know, give us an idea how you'd like to roll with this thing now you heard us talk a little bit about it. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think what I'll do is I'll take uh, Garnett's advice and um, reach out to other municipalities and see what kind of policies they have for park usage. Um, and then also just a question for you all. Um, are you thinking about any other parks? Um, is it gonna be specific to Coughlin Park? I know you have a policy against Oval Beach, um, but are there any other parks that we should be thinking about as we begin to, to draft the policy? Mr. Mayor? Yes. Uh, I would think that's a good point, Ryan, that we would open it up. Um, I see a difference between a social gathering and a wedding. Um, I think if it's a social gathering, then I would look at it more as a special event, possibly a little longer time. A wedding um, seems just to have a different uh, flavor to me. I don't think we should ha allow any equipment on the lawns, and I don't think anything should be staked down. But uh, and five hours seemed a little long to me. But I think we should definitely differentiate between a social thing as a special event and a wedding. That's just my idea of how to kind of sort them out. Mayor, if I may, and sure. to build up that point. Um, I, I don't think it'd be a one size fits all for the parks. I think the amount of people you could have for a wedding in Coughlin will be radically different than the amount of people you could have for a wedding in Wix. So I think if we go that route, it's going to probably involve different policies for different parks and on a number of variables. So just yeah, do, right. I agree. Do we really want to go there either, you know, without more, you know, history? Like okay. that. So council got anything more to share or, or more directions for, for Ryan or? Well, Mayor, this is Garn. Just one, yep. I just wanted to support what Kristen had said. And, you know, with so many of our Sadaba friends on the line, you know, having weddings and events like this basically helps every business in our town, um, whether it's a lodging or a restaurant, um, people are going to be coming, they're going to be staying, they're going to be eating, and it does nothing but bolster what we provide. Um, so I think any, the more welcoming we can be, I think the better. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'll agree with Garnett on that and Kristen Armstrong as well. Um, as far as the five hours, the only thing I would say about that is it does take time to set up all the chairs. And by the time you get your guests to arrive and for the bride to walk down the aisle and to clean up and take pictures, sometimes I think five hours is probably okay, um, but something to consider. And then also still in the policy, also still in the policy, there's a um, preferred vendor still listed as only one preferred vendor. So we do have to amend that if we're allowing other vendors as far as rental companies. The one, you know, that whatever was included in our packet still only has the one preferred vendor. So if we want to change that, that's all. Yeah, and Ryan, uh, I. Pretty much the council didn't want to go down that route of only one preferred Pretty vendor. So keep that in mind when you put things together. Okay, thank you. And if there's any other thoughts along the way, if the council members could just email me directly um, and not uh, email the, the rest of the council because of open meeting laws. But yeah, just please do email me your thoughts along the way if something pops into your mind and I'll be begin drafting um, a new policy. Are we holding up any of these scheduled events by not having a policy in force or scheduled events by not having or do you, who's that? I think Cindy mentioned that there were several or Aaron. Uh, I or did. Do you think we that have, they can adapt to whatever we come up with? Yes, currently we have three, well, we have two confirmed weddings that have already paid and have been provided the existing policy of using the gazebo and they're totally fine with that. They're having small weddings. Um, the third one, I want to say, was an August date, if I'm not mistaken. So I think we've got a little time before that wedding to uh, get back with them. 
Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah and I, I, I will trust that those dates don't conflict with any holidays or historical events, i.e. the last weekend of July, Venetian and... No, I, I reached out um, for a, a few different events that I knew happened in that park. I reached out to Laura Durham for a movie in the park to find out when we should put that on the calendar and also Venetian. So those dates are blocked, but if you have any other dates you'd like to include, please just let me know. But we, I do, when I accept one, I check the uh, shared staff calendar that has all of those. Any, any event that has an event permit goes on there automatically, but I've already blocked a few dates for things that I anticipate might happen depending okay. on COVID. All right. Mr. Okay. Mayor. Yes, Brian. Um, what I'd recommend is that this wedding party that wants to have their, their wedding in August, I mean, I know how much planning goes into a wedding and I don't know how long it's going to take us to get through the policy. It may take us a few, few meetings to do that. So what I'd recommend is that the, that the wedding party put forward a special events permit that would land on your a future, your, your meeting two weeks from now. And you can just handle that as a one-off just in case you don't get through your policy and that way the wedding party can move, move forward just a recommendation well i think that's a great idea so i think council certainly agrees with you on that one so indeed all right any other last comments before we move on all right thanks uh next item city manager comments and updates uh i had the opportunity to spend a, a, a little a few minutes with uh ryan and uh karen uh earlier this week and uh, I kind of just informed him and wanted Karen's input on some of the more, uh, I think, uh, items that council want to remain updated on kind of a current basis uh, as we go along. And uh, I mentioned a few of them, but uh, just suggested that, you know, Ryan prepare some comments and some updates on a few of the, the projects that are currently going on. So it's good. So is that good enough, Ryan, for you? It's really good, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I, I should mention that uh, I really appreciate the council um, having Karen stay on for one week of overlap. She's been extremely helpful, as as has all of staff. But um, it it's it's been well worth it. And so thank you for that, um, Karen. Do you want to give the first update? I've been talking a lot for my first meeting, and <laughs> I feel like you can jump in now. Uh, one thing we wanted to tell you was the status of the wall. Uh, it hasn't changed much since I reported on it two weeks ago. Cindy and I had a meeting with the two principals of Dune Ridge. Um, we got some concessions out of them. One, that that electric panel will not go up on our side of the wall. Uh, we thought we had some agreements to lower the wall. Um, they're, they're very aware that they're in violation of the ordinance. Um, what they want to do is to come before city council and present their concept. And um, they have a, a schedule, uh, your first, Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's the first meeting in March to, you know, just have a discussion uh, with council on their concept of what they want to do there. Um, it would, as long as that happens, well, I'm not gonna say I recommend, but it might behoove us to not start citing them until after they get a chance to speak to you. Uh, and that, that, I guess that is a recommendation to, to hold off starting the, the legal maneuvering until they have a chance to present their plan to you and get feedback. Um, frankly, it hasn't changed much from what they presented and took us to court on, but they, they have some ideas and, and want, to, want to share them. So that's, that's my report on the wall. Um, nothing has changed, it's still there. <laughs> But, but they're very aware that if, if council, if they don't get the variances, it has to be lowered at least. Um, one other thing I wanted to tell you was the uh, new sheriff's SUV that we ordered back in 
November arrived already. We kind of, I thought we had another month. Um, went up there and picked it up yesterday with the, with the deputy. And uh, I had a little bit of nervousness after we had the, the brown car, white car discussion. And I was very happy to see that it came out white. So we have another white car. It, it will be, it may be still at the garage, the DPW garage, but it's going to be taken over to the sheriff's department and uh, takes quite a bit of aftermarket equipment going into it. At your Monday's, Monday's meeting, you will be asked to approve uh, in a quote, uh, a contract with Mark's Body Shop who, who won the county bid on outfitting the, the, the major equipment in the car. And so that will be coming to you Monday. So it probably won't be in service in the city uh, for some weeks and it's got to get graphics on it and radar installed and lights and cages and everything that make, turns a regular vehicle into a sheriff's vehicle. So that's all. It came uh, in. All right, thanks. Before we before we leave, go back to Ryan. Um, comments regarding a potential meeting with Dune Ridge. Mayor, I'm, I'm, I myself am not too comfortable doing that. But yeah, Mayor, this is Garn. Uh, yeah. Along along those lines, um, I would think that the proper, if you will, the proper way in which this should be handled is back through Planning Commission. Um, Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong, but they had presented and gotten one thing approved through planning and then deviated from that. Um, plus, I think something's expired, so they really have to go back through planning and zoning. Is that not correct? Isn't that, that the is, proper procedure? That is correct. Um, they have submitted a site plan review application to, to me. It's not complete. I've asked for more information and I haven't heard back yet, so I'm not sure where they are with that. Um, yeah, okay. their, their DEQ permit expired that they got from the DEQ for the, the project, so. Okay, well, that's my five cents worth. We have a planning commission for a reason. <laughs> and although, you know, I'm sure everybody would like to talk to us first, I think they really should go through the proper channels. That's my opinion. Well, we've got several boards they have to go. I mean, you got planning, you got the, the ZBA, um, zoning board of, a, you know, <clears throat> approval. Uh, I just think it's bad precedent to start council sitting down and discuss and read this, you know, sitting down and talking to a developer on a project that has been hashed about reviewed by various other boards and commissions by the courts. And now it's like, you know, hey, maybe the, you know, I, I, I just don't feel comfortable with it myself. So I, I'm kind of in the in the, the same, uh, you know, thought that uh, Garnett's with any, any other council person have a comment on this? I agree with, with you, Mayor and the Mayor Pro Tem. I do too. You know, to put the staff in a, a tougher, tough, a continued tough position. Uh, but, you know, it goes with the territory, I guess. So uh, I guess we'll wait and hear updates as this uh, issue uh, continues between Ryan and Cindy. And uh, probably one thing Karen's probably going to be glad to put in the rearview mirror. So. <laughs> From Friday afternoon. So, uh, okay, Ryan, you want to continue, please? Yeah, the next update we have for you is regarding uh, houseboats. Uh, the first thing you should know um, is that, according to the attorney, houseboats should forever be known as floating homes. So, we'll have to get that into our vernacular. Um, so, there's two issues going on with the floating homes. Uh, first is the uh, moratorium. And the, uh, and the language uh, for the moratorium, in, including the definition of floating homes. So that's something the attorney is working on actively. He says he's going to get us that language by early next week. So it'll hit your next workshop and your, your next agenda cycle. Um, 
Any questions on the moratorium? This is just a very high level update. Well, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Ahead. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, thanks, Ryan. Um, yeah, I'm glad we're moving quickly on this. I think creating certainty for 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 people that currently operate boats that they reside on, I think it's important. So I think it's important we, we move quickly on this. And um, at some point, I'm not sure what, what the right part of the process is, but I, I, I think it would be valuable to get some input from the, um, the marina operators on what their experience is, what their thoughts are on people that, that you know, have put floating structures, floating homes, things that clearly aren't boats, what their experience and what their policy is, if they have one. So I'd like to hear some feedback from, from the marinas, if, if, if it's possible, just to get their views on, on you know, what they consider to be a, a floating home and what they consider to be a, a normal vessel and, and just their experience. I think it'd be useful to get some other ideas on the table. Okay, all right. Okay, certainly can do that. And one, one of the things that uh, I, I brought up to, to, uh, uh, to Ryan is also the fact that we uh, were interested in an exemption uh, for, for vessels that were in the harbor as of some date last summer. And so I think you're, they're still working on that, correct, Ryan? That's correct. The, um, the attorney is aware um, of that need, and he's going to be incorporating that and in, into the language as well. All right. Okay. Uh, All right. Lauren, you have anything to questions or things you want uh, to share? Yeah, just to piggyback on Scott, if a private marina allows floating houses, if whatever we decide as a city, will that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Will that uh, negate whatever they decide within their private marina? So say if a, a sergeant's or um, Singapore Yacht Club decides that they're okay with floating houses, if we decide as a city, you know, our, our policy on floating houses, is it, you know, does it go over top of what they might want to do in their own marinas? That would just be a question I would have. Yeah, I think Cindy might be in a better position to kind of address that a little bit because then I think then you start talking whether they'll be controlled by regulation or through zoning then, possibly as an approach. But the way Cindy? I the way I understand the um, the ordinance as um, pre uh, projected, it will be to allow the ones that are already existing to remain. And then it will be up to the council de to determine where would they be allowed and when they would be allowed and what the regulations would be about allowing them. For example, there's options that say, if you stay more than 14 days without moving, then you need to have a, a special permit for that. And if there is going to be a permit, what would be the parameters? After thinking it through a little bit, I think a full service marina is probably the only good location for a floating home because they have the access for the trash and the parking and the clubhouse and the, the sewage disposal. But that's just my opinion and that's something that you, you're going to decide collectively as a group. And it would be outside of the zoning ordinance, it would be a regulatory ordinance. So we really won't know the shape and form and specifics till we get some some language in front of us. Uh, so uh, including in that language has to be a tidying up of the uh, definition of the houseboats, you know, so, you know, which just limit or the floating homes, just eliminating the term houseboat and some of the language about people living on them, uh, that's got to be that's got to be taken out of there and uh, but it's a work in progress and I think uh, I think Ryan understands the uh, importance to the council on, on, on kind of fast tracking this with us with the uh, uh, the attorneys uh, Chris you have anything to add or I don't I think they're all good questions and and uh, I look forward I actually got a couple of um, emails from people you might have two that said 
thank you for looking into this. And they were in private marinas. So I think it's a pretty important thing we're looking at. I'm glad we're moving forward. All right. Anyone else, Council? Final comments regarding this, this topic? If not, Ryan, anything else? Keep no, just to, just to piggyback on, I mean, I spoke to the ordinance, or excuse me, the moratorium, but second part of this is the long-term ordinance and staff has re, has received the first draft. Um, so we're gonna be digging into that. And again, it'll be ready for your late February meeting. Okay, all right. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, then moving forward, uh, this is an opportunity, uh, second opportunity for uh, public comment. So if uh, there's someone in the audience to, who wants to address council, please, uh, Acknowledge yourself, indicate your uh, name and uh, community of residence and limit your comments to three minutes and welcome to Holly Leo. See her, see her there. So uh, Holly, I, now, before we go there, did you, are you hearing us okay? Do you want to bring up any questions or anything? Are you good on any of the, what we've oh. discussed so far? You know what? Everyone asked the questions that I had, so I just kept my mouth shut. I mean, um, I, I, that that's novel for me, so I just thought I'd. <laughs> um, no, I I mean I I thought every everybody um, covered the topics, um, and I'm glad that Scott spoke up, and I was glad that Ryan uh, mentioned other parks. And um, I'm following the house bud issue. So thanks, Mark. All righty, you bet. Okay, now I'll reopen it to public comment. Does anyone wish to address the council? Aaron, see any hands up or any action there? I do not, sir. All right, okay. Then uh, we'll close this uh, public comment portion of the meeting. Open up to uh, one last time to council. Scott? Just uh, welcome to Ryan. And um, Scott, if you haven't taught Ryan how to drive the plow truck yet, uh, you better get some sleep tonight. I think you're going to be busy. He said 4 a.m. was good. He wasn't used to 4 a.m. yet. <laughs> I'm going to have to work into that. <laughs> But I do plan to go on the plow this weekend with, uh, with Scott. Good. Anyone else, Council? Mr. Mayor? Uh, yes, Chris. Um, Cindy, as always, is on the ball, as well as Christine from Wix. And we had our first meeting of the patio pop-ups. Looking forward yes. to what's going to happen this, this summer. And uh, I'd like to just turn it over to Lauren, because she did a lot of research on pop-up patios and entertainment areas and street closings and things. And, and she just, she really jumped on this. So if it's okay, I'd like to have her explain what happened. Yeah, Chris, thank you. So um, Cindy had asked um, myself and Chris, and then Ryan sat in on the meeting too. We were there yesterday and I think we had a really great discussion on the pop-up patios. Um, consensus is we really, we just want them back. Um, COVID is still a thing. Um, we will have to deal with it uh, quite a bit going forward. We don't know when it's gonna end. Um, so we do want to be able to update the policy. Um, Cindy just wanted to make sure that we are addressing some of the issues that um, Scott at DPW had. Um, and I think we, we came up with some pretty good, you know, um, solutions to any of the, you know, the fairly minor issues that um, popped up, whether that was you know, the street sweeping, not being able to get in some of those corners and making sure um, the restaurant owners are taking care of that. Um, as far as, you know, starting up some pop-up patios, um, wanting to do it in early spring and what that could mean with snow removal, if we have snow um, in March or April. Um, and also just wanting to make sure we're getting our policy set um, so people can start making their plans as far as um, what will be allowed, um, whether it's going to be the same as what we allowed last year, or if there's any, you know, dimensional differences that we need to address. So restaurant owners can be ready to go 
um, with what they want to do with their pop-up patios. Um, so just a few more takeaways from it. Again, we are in favor of pop-up patios as far as the discussion was concerned, but we will take it to council, obviously, and we'll we'll have that discussion on what you guys think as far as continuing pop-up patios this coming spring and summer. Um, and then also, uh, let me think. Let me just go through some of my notes a little bit. Um, just the idea of, okay, so one of the bigger issues was parking spaces. Obviously, this takes up some parking spaces, and that was probably the biggest complaint if you want to talk about a complaint at all. Um, we do have some ideas on where to get some extra parking spaces or some extra shuttle services that could be in town to help with the lack of parking. Um, so I know Cindy is going to ask the city engineer to talk about some of those things um, as far as where we think we could get some more parking spaces. Um, one idea that I want the council to think about and for the public to think about, ah, people are gonna have a stroke as I'm thinking about this, um, but the idea of possibly making Butler one way with angled parking, just like 8th Street in Holland. The idea behind that is to ask the city engineer how many more spaces we could get if we did that. Is it wide enough to even consider it? Is the street wide enough even to consider it? How far down Butler Street we could go? And you know, depending on how far down, how many more parking spaces we could create by doing that. I know that freaks people out because it is a change, um, but I also think with COVID and everything that's happened and with pop-up patios taking up a few, you know, parking spaces throughout town, this is an option that we might want to consider. Another option is having more shuttle services. Um, just being able to, one, have the inner urban, you know, being able to do some more shuttling if people park further away from town. The idea also other ideas for businesses that could possibly do shuttle services, whether that's a golf cart shuttle service that would be like a business in town that would have to be approved and they could do some shuttling. So these are all ideas that I hope people are thinking about um, as we approach our tourism season. Um, and as we start these pop-ups again, um, things that I want you know the whole council to be thinking about and the community to be thinking about is you know, what we would consider. Um, let's see. Um, also trying to get vacation rental companies and um, other inns in town as well as businesses to try to get our employees to park further away, whether that's at the high school and walking in or be shuttled in, you know, and encouraging that. Ryan and I acknowledge that we, I have teenagers that work at my business and show up at the last second and they park where they can. And that's kind of hard to make people do. Um, but if we can just, you know, as an overall, as a community, try to encourage our employees and people to do more walking, um, to create more parking spaces downtown. Um, let me think. Um, the idea of um, allowing pop-up patios to continue after possibly COVID is over. Um, we love the idea of what it did to our town as far as creating more outdoor dining spaces. Um, and then what that looks like post COVID. Um, right now we don't charge a fee um, for people to have a pop-up patio. And I don't think we should. I think our restaurants suffered enough. They don't need to be charged a fee from the city. Um, and we just feel like maybe somewhere down the road post COVID when life is a lot better, maybe we would charge a fee for a pop-up patio down the road when we're not dealing with the effects of COVID as far as our business community is concerned. I don't want to talk anymore. I feel like I'm rambling. So if anybody had, Chris, if you want to add any more to that, that I'm forgetting. But one more thing, well, we had a request from a business owner to have the tents go up first of March. Another one wanted them first of April. So we're looking at possibly uh, allowing two weeks where we would have some type of not a special event request, but the ability to have a tent for the first week in March at, through St. Patrick's Day. Um, and we'll just, just to try it, but we want to make sure our restaurants through St. Patrick's, they have the best shot at making a nickel as, as they can. And so that's an issue that we'll be bringing to you is, is the tents for a, a two week trial period first. Yeah, 
just to piggyback on that, the idea was um, possibly allowing a tent in a uh, closed off street area. Um, we did have the discussion on social districts and what other communities are doing. So I'm encouraging everyone to read a little bit about what Petoskey, um, Rockford, Grand Rapids are doing as far as social districts. Um, you know, just so you know, it doesn't always include closing down streets. Uh, some people chose to close down streets. Other people are, you know, you have a cup that you can get from, you know, a local establishment. You can get a, you know, a hot toddy at Phil's and walk down the sidewalk and, you know, possibly shop in stores if they allow it. Um, but also creating like social areas where people can walk about our community and take their drinks to go. Um, there's lots of different options out there as far as what different communities are doing. And I think Saugatuck has to create their own. Um, you know, we're a unique town with restaurants on one side of town and not just on the main street. So we want to be able to include everyone so nobody is hurt by something we decide. So, but I encourage you guys to look into what social districts look like in other communities, um, just so you see the various options. Um, lots of great options out there. And all of this is really just to help our business community. Okay, thank you. It sounds like we have a committee, a volunteer committee that's gonna work with uh, Ryan and, and Cindy on some of these uh, projects. So uh, that's wonderful. I don't have to appoint anybody to it. Though. <laughs> and I think Garnett would be glad to, to participate in that too, since she was so involved last time around. Yeah, all right. So. And we'll, 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 we'll wait to hear what uh, collectively you guys come up with. So any other comments? If not, uh, this is our last time we'll be together with Karen. Oh. So again, I uh, want to say uh, adios and uh, best in the future for you. And we appreciate uh, all you've done for us. And... Uh, Thanks again, Karen. You're uh, welcome. Pleasure was all mine. All righty. Okay. Thanks, uh, Karen. Anything else? Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to, I don't think we have to adjourn. Oh yeah, it says roll call. So uh, I have a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, motion by Lewis, seconded by Dean to uh, adjourn the meeting uh, with the Clerk, please call or roll on the question. Lewis? Yes. Dean? Yes. Leo? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Stanton? Yes. Beckham? Yes. Uh, thanks, everybody. Stay safe out there. I'm looking out the window. It's snowing pretty good. Mm. And uh, we'll see you all Monday night. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm going to freeze my little tush off when I get home. That's all. I'd say, uh, Holly, I'd go. Be safe. Yeah. See ya. Yeah, but good night, everybody.